Hello, my name is Dr. Maureen Anderson. I am a lead veterinarian animal health and welfare at OMAFRA, and I'm very pleased to be able to present this webinar today on the often talked about, but sometimes easier said than done topic of veterinary antimicrobial stewardship, specifically within the agriculture sector. Let's start with why we even care about antimicrobial stewardship. I'm sure everyone watching this presentation is familiar with antimicrobial drugs and of course how important they are for protecting animal health and welfare and the safety of our food supply. But we always need to keep in mind that many of these same or related drugs are equally important to maintaining our own health and those of our friends, family, and loved ones. Both of these things are, of course, threatened by the ongoing emergence of antimicrobial resistance, which makes these very precious drugs ineffective against the bacterial infections we've become all too accustomed to treating with them. And that applies to infections in people and in animals, as well as the bugs that move between people and animals. And this is a problem all over the world, including right here in Canada, Ontario, and our own backyards. There are lots of scary numbers out there, like 2 million antimicrobial resistant infections in the US alone every year, leading to 23,000 deaths, and estimates that if we don't change something in a hurry, by 2050, AMR infections could cause 10 million deaths worldwide annually, surpassing even cancer as a cause of death. And so there are some who quite rightly fear that we may enter the post-antibiotic era. We take it for granted that if we scrape a knee or cut a finger and it doesn't quite heal properly and ends up getting seriously infected, that we can use an antibiotic to help get that infection under control. But in the post-antibiotic era, as in the pre-antibiotic era prior to the 1940s, it is not far-fetched for a person to actually go septic and potentially die from something as small as a cut on a finger. And that's part of the reason why our grandparents and great-grandparents always wanted us to be so careful about being injured, because they remember that time. We need to remember that selection for more resistant bacteria happens every time we use an antimicrobial, whether it's in a human, an animal, or in the environment. When you use an antimicrobial, you are essentially treating the world. So yes, one of the cornerstones of stewardship is reducing antimicrobial use, so we're not needlessly accelerating this process. When you look at where we currently use antimicrobials in Canada, no one can deny that on a gross kilogram basis, we use more in animals, up to 80%. Even when we correct for the body mass of the animals versus the humans being treated, we still use about one and a half times more antimicrobials in animals by mass. This has in the past led to a lot of finger pointing at agriculture and a seemingly obvious target for reductive interventions. When you look at how Canada compares with other countries in terms of antimicrobial use in animals, still corrected for population, we're certainly not the worst, but there's also certainly room for improvement. But it's critical to, to remember how interconnected we all are. Humans, animals, and even the environment. And that means we all have an important role, no matter what the size, to play in combating antimicrobial resistance. In terms of arguing over who is to blame or who is more to blame for AMR, really at this point, that ship has sailed. Antimicrobial resistance is here and now, and we all need to deal with it together. So what do we do? To be good antimicrobial stewards, we can't just look at how much. We also need to look at what types of drugs we're using. As you can see by this graph, there are large differences in the classes of antimicrobials being used in animals and people. And all these drugs have different potencies and different levels of importance for treating serious infections in people. Looking at it another way, these pie graphs show how different the breakdown of antimicrobials by class is in humans and livestock, and how similar it is, for example, in humans and companion animals. There are a lot of different definitions of antimicrobial stewardship out there, and you'll notice they tend to share some keywords like improve or monitor or measure. And a lot of them talk specifically about use, but what I really want to drive home is that stewardship is not all about use. It's more than just prescriptions. 
It's also about, and perhaps even more so, when not to use antimicrobials and what else we can do instead to prevent and treat infections. So this is my preferred definition of antimicrobial stewardship. The multifaceted faceted approaches required to sustain the efficacy of antimicrobials and minimize the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. So that's obviously a very broad definition and a lot of different things can fall under it. For example, recent regulatory and policy changes made by the federal government can be considered part of their stewardship efforts. There's a lot more information on these changes on the FAST website, but the ultimate effect is that all medically important antimicrobials for use in animals now require a prescription from a veterinarian. And to quote the late great Stan Lee, with great power comes great responsibility. So veterinarians really need to up their game with regard to stewardship as well. While this is not a new role, we could call it a renewed role for veterinarians, and it has never been bigger or more important. Veterinarians are now responsible for guiding the use of all medically important antimicrobials, which includes everything in Health Canada's categories one, two, and three. While most of the products used in livestock fall into categories two and three, there are several drugs, notably Ceftiafura, for example, that fall into category one, and with which we need to be especially careful. The College of Veterinarians of Ontario, which is the licensing body for veterinarians in the province, has been working diligently to provide veterinarians with guidance documents to help them in their renewed role. And these include practice standards on prescribing, dispensing, compounding, extra label drug use, as well as the veterinarian client patient relationship, telemedicine and remote dispensing. And all of these materials are available directly on the CVO website. If concern about superbugs and the specter of the post-antibiotic era and professional ethics and responsibility still aren't quite sufficient motivation to help drive better antimicrobial stewardship in an agriculture context, then also consider the evolving attitudes of consumers here in Canada and in our export markets. We effectively operate under and are given a social license to use antimicrobials in livestock. And like it or not, that license is currently being put under the magnifying glass. We really want to do everything we can to maintain that social license, even if it requires some extra effort. As this slide from the US Center for Food Integrity shows, the alternative is social control, which is much more rigid and costly. But there are, of course, several examples of countries where this is now actually the model. So what's going to happen now? It is very important to realize that at the end of the day, despite the very real impact that AMR has on livestock, agriculture, and veterinary medicine, it's the human health concerns that will always trump everything else. And so it's critical that as veterinarians and animal owners, we do our part as antimicrobial stewards in order to maintain our social license to use and access these drugs. That means also working together in sectors that haven't traditionally had a lot of strong veterinary client patient relationships, such as backyard livestock, bees and fish. It also means that sooner or later, we're going to have to show people the numbers to provide evidence that we are actually hitting our targets and even to set those targets in the first place. A lot of producers and veterinarians are leery of antimicrobial use or AMU surveillance for a number of reasons. There is certainly a time slash pain in the butt factor that needs to be addressed, but that's something we continue to work on and with the wonders of modern technology. With regard to the fear factor, I like to say that veterinary practices, and probably the same can be said for farms, generally fall into one of two categories. If you are at a clinic that does a fantastic job of antimicrobial stewardship, that's fantastic. We really need you to share your story and your numbers so that others can do the same and we can prove it essentially to everybody else. If you are a clinic that you try very hard but perhaps fall a bit short in some areas of stewardship, know that you are not alone by a long shot. But by sharing your data, it helps identify those common pain points 
so that collectively we can develop tools to help everybody do a better job. There is theoretically a third category, which would be those who make no specific effort with regard to antimicrobial stewardship. But in this day and age, I really hope that category has gone the way of the dodo, as this is no longer an issue that anyone can afford to ignore. It's also important to acknowledge that there are a lot of factors that we need to work to overcome when it comes to antimicrobial stewardship. For one thing, change is hard and not uncommonly expensive. And we need to play the long game in this case because believe it or not, that's what the bacteria are doing. They have been around for millions and millions of years and they are really good at the long game. Other issues include cost of diagnostic tests that could help guide antimicrobial use, pressure from clients who are used to getting antibiotics for their animals but aren't immediately concerned perhaps with the broader implications of treating their particular animal herd or flock. And in veterinary medicine, especially compared to human medicine, a general lack of sound evidence-based antimicrobial use guidelines for when we do have animals that need treatment. All of these are challenges we need to work on, but none of them are reasons to not put our best effort in when it comes to stewardship. Case in point, the Canadian Veterinary Medical Association has just launched its online interface for antimicrobial use guidelines in beef, dairy, poultry, swine, small ruminants, and companion animals in order to help Canadian veterinarians with their decision making when it comes to treatment of these species. The guidelines were specifically developed for this website by leading veterinary experts in Canada, and any licensed veterinarian in Canada can access these guidelines until April 1st, 2019. But as I keep saying, stewardship is not just about use. It's also about refining, stopping, and even preventing use. There are lots of other components that can be incorporated into a stewardship program at any practice. One of the keys is to tailor the program to what works at a particular clinic or on a particular operation, depending on size, species, location, and a whole host of other factors. On-farm tools like this simple algorithm for treatment of diarrhea at calves can have a dramatic impact on antimicrobial use. In one study, this particular algorithm was shown to reduce antimicrobial use in diarrhea at calves by 80%, with no significant change in overall mortality. Tools like this infographic from the Ontario Animal Health Network are useful for talking to clients about stewardship in ways they can understand, while also showing them their animals can often be treated effectively without antimicrobials. So to finish off, I will leave you with a very quick and dirty antimicrobial stewardship 101 guide that should be at the core of every clinic and on-farm stewardship program do use antimicrobials in a targeted way to treat susceptible infections, following label directions whenever possible, and always with the guidance of a veterinarian. Do not use antimicrobials out of habit or as a Hail Mary when they are not indicated, such as for viral infections, or when other measures can be used to prevent infection instead. Thank you very much for your time and attention please visit the FAST website at amstewardship.ca to make use of the plethora of available resources they have there.